Welcome to Biggest Little Library. It's Amy and Tammy with the Friday Four. This is four quick recommendations we think you're going to love. So we're celebrating women. We are. And so you have a couple great reads over there. I do. I have two nonfiction. Surprise, surprise. So (laughs) (laughs) not really. Right. The first is one invisible woman. Nobody did dawn on me that (laughs) maybe we should talk about that one, but it's okay. I'm teasing you. I know you love that book. That's a freebie. That's not one of the four. It is. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to talk about Memorial Drive, a daughter's memoir. This came out in July of 2020 by Natasha uh, Trethaway. I think is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm, Trethaway. mm -hmm. And it was a book that really was on like every list. So New York Times Notable Book, Washington Post, Top 10 Best wow. Books of 2020, and Amazon Best Book of 2020, and PR Best Book of 2020, you name it. And this book was was on it. And it is her memoir about when she was growing up, when she was 19 years old, her former stepfather shot and killed her mother. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. It is. And you know, you think about 19 years old and you're an adult, so there's no one who's going to take you in to I raise know. you because you're an adult. Right. And so it's really about her being new to adulthood and confronting kind of the the twin poles of life and death and in the aftermath of this unimaginable trauma and how that shapes her as an artist because she's a, a poet. She's a, a National Poet Laureate. She's a Pulitzer Prize winner. And it's really her voice about like this whole process of grieving over the situation with her mother and how that grief has played out in her poetry. Oh, and yeah. I love that it's in a sense um, paying homage to a mother daughter. Mm-hmm. I think that that's mm-hmm. kind of special. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's, I love the cover. It's a beautiful picture of her as a baby in her mother's arms. Aww. And it's, I, I think it's terrific. I know I picked it up at Barnes and Noble. I was really excited about I know. it. It's I'm excited great. to offer it because we do send out a, a lot of memoirs. Go mm-hmm. out of here a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And then do you want me to give my second one? Yeah, or do go you for me? your okay. second one since they're both nonfiction. So, okay. So my second one is called Why We Can't Sleep, Women's New Midlife Crisis by Ada Calhoun. We have been dying to read this book. I know. And it is about really how busy the lives of women really are. I know. And generationally what that means. And so she talks about Gen X, which is you. Yes. You're a Gen Xer. Mm-hmm. I am the tail end of the boomers. Are you really? I am. Because that goes through 64 and I was born December of 63. Wow. So, but I cannot, but also what the age I am, I could be the very beginning of the Gen X. Okay. But she really was kind of looking around at all of the women in her life and how exhausted women are. And she Uh was really curious about why that is, what has changed so much. And so she looked at all kinds of really interesting data, like housing costs, HR trends and hiring, Mm -hmm. um, credit card debt average, divorce data. And she saw this pattern developing That the boomers uh, or the Gen X people that are sandwiched between the boomers and the millennials are facing problems that women before haven't haven't really felt, you know, so as they're in their their middle age, these things were coming up for women and pretty much by and large, women were just told, okay, well, you know, lean in. To, to what you're doing, <laughs> just lean in um, yeah, and take some me time or make a chore chart and get your lives get together. Get yourself a list. And mm-hmm. so she really wanted to write about and address, you know, kind of those, those issues going on. And so really it's a, it's a reassuring kind of empowering um, essential read for women that are middle-aged and um, anyone who really expects to understand women and everything we go through. I feel like the desperate need to read that. Right. Because I do feel like we grew up in a generation, at least I did. Do you Mm -hmm. remember that commercial that was like women bring home the bacon and they fry it up in the pan? Mm -hmm. I feel like that that was like the, the call of our generation, like have it all. 
Mm -hmm. Like go out and get your career, which I love. I'm grateful for my career. And I would never tell somebody not to go, you know, educate and get a career. I think that's amazing, but also be like super mom and you can be super at everything. And I think that that's probably like the curse of this generation is that we think we can do it all Mm -hmm. and do it all to like super level. And that's not really possible because we only have 24 hours. Right. 24 hours and I don't sleep well. I'm just telling you. I know. So me either. All right. So. <laughs> so anyway, and I love the cover. At first you go, oh, I think it's like a Rorschach. And then when you look again, Is it it's people's all faces? women's faces facing in. So mm. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. So that's great. That's my two. All right. So tell me, you have fiction, right? Do I you do have fiction, have fiction okay. written by women's authors. Excellent. So the very first one I want to talk, I'm talking about two that actually came from my book of the month. Love it. I know. And the I blue box. I know the blue box. And I totally struggled with picking because they only let me select three. Interesting. And I wanted all of them. So then, <laughs> of then they came and I was like, oh, I wish I got that other one too. So then I tr- tried to figure out how I could order the other one that I was wanting. Right. So I wanted four of the five. The first one, I picked it because it's literary fiction and I love literary fiction. And it is also touted, they say, they say, now who's they? I'm not really sure. But they say it is going to be like one of the most amazing books of 2021 and so I'm like all right I'll nibble at that that's right literary fiction it's a woman Mm -hmm. author and um hopefully and the cover is kind of interesting yeah it's called infinite country by by Patricia Engel and what I love about this immediately is she's actually like uh an inner in a sense an international author Mm -hmm. she's straddling the two worlds of America and of Colombia which I think is really great because we're going to get some different perspective Mm mm-hmm And it is about a family. It's about a young girl who's, we meet her and she's being held in a correctional institute for some sort of a crime, like violent crime. And we're not really sure what that is. The writing has an exquisite quality to it, which is, which is always a draw for me. It is for you. You know, I'm a total snob. (laughs) No, no, not at all. (laughs) You just like things that are well-written and resonate with you in the, in the words. I do. I really appreciate like something that catches me off guard. And so the very first line, I have to read it to you, was it was her idea to tie up the nun. Oh, I'm in with right? that too. I know. And I was like, yes. what? What? And I'm like, hmm? And I keep reading it. And it's it, obviously it's the girl in the Correctional Institute. And so I I was like, okay, that is a great first line. It I is. I think, because I'm always looking at first lines and last night lines. It's kind of mm-hmm. one of my things. And so it is about um, a family, a family that is straddling two different countries and how they came to America and um, this urban life of uh, Bogota, Colombia. Do you know Kevin's been to Colombia? Really? Yeah. Oh. He flew in there several times. Huh. Yeah. That's cool. He's got some interesting stories. So anyway, um, Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. It is a book of the month for last month, I suppose. And it's looks relatively short family story, literary fiction. I'm in in because they tied tied up up a nun. I know. (laughs) Right. All right. The other one that I'm showing to has had so much buzz. It has. I've seen it everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's called, um, the four winds by Kristen Hannah. And I have read other things of Kristen Hannah. Right. And it's funny because I read the great alone and I thought it was the most magnificent, book she's ever written well okay to be fair I've only read three well how many has she written a lot Tammy she's written a lot of books yeah and so when I read the Nightingale Kevin gave it to me and we read it together which was really cute it was like a Christmas gift and I liked it it was good I didn't love the Nightingale which I think surprises a lot of people it was like a three and a half for me I didn't read it so I don't know okay well historical fiction second world world remember we've talked about this it's kind of my jam it was during my jam of second world world historical (laughs) fiction Um, and it was good. The Great Alone is a, like a showstopper. I can picture that cover. I know. And mm-hmm. I give it to people, men and women alike, and they love it. Mm. So lots of build up to this new one, which is set really during, um, it starts in the 20s, but it really is set during the, um, the Dust Bowl. Oh, you know what I wondered because it's got because it's wheat, wheat on, on the, the cover. Front. I wondered about that. Hmm. Yeah, so we start in Texas in 1921, a time of abundance. Okay, because the Great War is over, things are changing and shifting, and we meet this family, and we meet the eldest daughter of the family, who is 
um, unmarried at 26 in 1921. She's a spinster. That's right, girl. She's a spinster. <laughs> Her name is Elsa. Okay, I'm four, I'm four chapters in. Okay. I don't really like Elsa yet, but I'm hoping I will <laughs> like Elsa. And yeah. here's what I'm going to say. I feel like Kristen Hanna does really good historical fiction for the most part. Uh-huh. Like I've enjoyed her historical fiction. I love this time period in history. This might right. be my new jam. Okay. As far as like, I've read a lot from this, you know, I love yeah. Grapes of Wrath. You know how I, I feel know about you the do. Grapes of Wrath. I know you do. Um, there's also another great one, which I won't drop right now. Maybe we should do like that. That should be a, a Friday four. Oh yeah. Let's where we do talk that. about time frames yeah, from there. Decades or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm pretty excited to find out. Elsa is, I can already tell you, um, ends up in a marriage that she maybe doesn't necessarily wants to be in, but she wants to, she wants to get married and she wants to have a baby. But because of things that have happened to her in her life, that's not looking good for her. Okay. But she does end up married where I'm at right now. All right. And she really desperately wants to have an education. Hmm. Running theme. Women right. like to be smart and educate themselves. Exactly. So I'm really excited to see how this um, turns out. And I'm excited about the fact that it's set in like the Dust Bowl era. So I'd like to see her slant on it. I love that. I know. So those are my Friday. What were your two again? Okay. So I had Memorial Drive by Natasha Tre- Trethaway. And Why We Can't Sleep by Ada Calhoun. I want to read both of yours. Mm. And then I have Infinite Country by Patricia Engel and The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. And I want I actually want to read all four. You know what? I do too, actually, after that. Because The Nun. Well, The Nun is intriguing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why would you tie up The Nun? I'll find out for you. I'll let okay. you know if it's worth reading. Okay. For other great book recommendations, check out our blogs. Click the link here in the show notes. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter. See you in the stacks. stacks.